Hi, this is Ms. Delosier, and these are your notes on cells. So we're going to start with a really basic overview of cells um, because this should be primarily review for all of you. So the first thing you need to know is that cells are the basic unit of life, and I, I think we've already talked about that, and I'm fairly certain you've seen that several times throughout your other classes. They're small. Um, we measure cells in micrometers. That's not a U. That's a, a, a mu, which is the symbol for micro. Uh, so one millionth of a meter. And they vary in size, structure, and function. So when you think about a cell, um, we, we're, we're generally thinking about um, a typical cell drawing that you've seen in ninth grade biology uh, or, or in middle school. And cells don't really look like that most of the time. Most of the time cells are differentiated and they're going to contain really specialized structures to help them function in the tissue that they're in. So um, there's not a typical cell. Most cells are, are differentiated. Uh, and so when you see a cell, you're, you're typically in, in anatomy and physiology, you're going to see a specific cell. So you're going to see like a neuron or an adipose cell, uh, which is a fairly large cell. So that's 140 micrometers. But it could be like a red blood cell. And that's 7.5 micrometers. And those are vastly different in size. A muscle cell. We normally, when we talk in biology uh, and you look in a textbook, you see a composite cell. And so a composite cell, this is more like what you're used to seeing. It's got its cilia, it's got its flagella, nucleus, endoplasmic reticulum, some ribosomes, some Golgi bodies, mitochondria, some vesicles, lysosomes, centrioles. So all of that stuff. And, and that doesn't mean that that's what a normal cell looks like. So we're going to talk about the overview, the basics of cells, but just keep in mind that as we go through um, tissues and we go into different body systems, the cells aren't going to look like what you're used to seeing. So let's look at the main parts of a cell. So the main parts of a cell, you guys know, it's the nucleus, the cytoplasm, and the cell membrane. And so the nucleus uh, contains the nuclear envelope, the nucleolus, and chromatin. Those are the three parts. The cytoplasm is all of the organelles and cytosol, which is like the fluid, the jelly stuff that's within the cell. And then the cell membrane is just kind of that outer boundary. And it's selectively permeable. It lets some stuff in, other stuff not. And it's a phospholipid bilayer that has proteins and carbohydrates embedded in it. And we're going to talk about all of those separately. Um, maybe not all in these notes, though. So let's start with the nucleus, because that's kind of the part of the cell that you're the most familiar with. The nucleus contains the DNA, so it's where we store the genetic information of a cell. Um, and we have three parts, like I just said. You have the nuclear envelope, which is a membrane that surrounds the nucleus. That's all it is. Uh, and it has um, pores in it. So it's got little openings, and those pores allow things in and out of the nucleus. Not everything. It's selectively permeable, only certain things. Uh, and then you have the nucleolus. The nucleolus is a dense ball of RNA and proteins, um, and it's found within the nucleus. And it just looks like an area that's stained a different color. But it's important because it's where ribosomes are made. And remember, ribosomes are what make all of the proteins in the cell. Um, so that's the nucleolus. And then you can have chromatin. And chromatin is all of the chromosomes um, in the cell. And chromatin is made of DNA and histone proteins, and it's just, you know, your DNA and your nucleus. So that's the nucleus of the cell, right? So we are also got to talk about cytoplasmic organelles. And this, I would like to tell you, is going to be fast, but it's not going to be fast. Um, but the good news is that if you know these, you don't have to take notes on them. Uh, and if there's only part that you've forgotten, you can just make a, a jot down on the handout that goes with the, the presentation, right? So the first thing we're going to talk about is the cytoskeleton, which provides support. It's made of rods and microtubules. Um, and then we're going to talk about ribosomes. Uh, ribosomes are uh, in the cytoplasm. They're also found on the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Um, and ribosomes are made of RNA and protein, which makes sense because I just said that they were made in the nucleolus, right? And that's made of RNA and protein. And so ribosomes are important because they translate the mRNA that comes out of the nucleus into new proteins. So ribosomes are important because they make new proteins. So very important job. So primarily found um, on the rough ER, but there's also free ribosomes that are just kind of floating around in the, in the cytosol. 
And then the endoplasmic reticulum, since I just said it, the ER. The endoplasmic reticulum, uh, it's a membrane-bound pathway. It's kind of like a flattened sack of membrane, and it's involved in transportation. And there's two types. There's rough ER, which I just said, and it contains ribosomes and is for protein synthesis. And then there's smooth ER, and smooth ER is actually used for lipid synthesis, which if you're remembering the notes that we just did on macromolecules, that means for like fat synthesis, um, and not like, you know, to make like adipose cells, but to produce the fats that the body needs and the cell needs to function. Although you do need adipose cells, but we'll talk about that when we get to the different body systems. Okay, so the next set of cytoplasmic organelles, because we just did three, right? We just did three, and you're probably like, oh, there's some on there that I, I was expecting that aren't there. Yeah, we're, we're gonna get there. So the next set, cytoplasmic organelles, we're gonna start with vesicles. You're like, why are you saving the good ones for last, Ms. Delosier? Because I need you guys to do the ones that you're probably less familiar with first before you tune out on me. So vesicles are membrane sacs, uh, and they store and transport materials through the cell. That's basically it. So they could be like bringing stuff into the cell and transporting stuff through the cell, or you could be like sending things from the endoplasmic reticulum to the Golgi and then out of the cell through exocytosis. Uh, so just little circles of uh, phospholipid filled with stuff that you need to move. Uh, then we're going to talk about the Golgi apparatus. You've also probably seen this referred to as the Golgi body. The text refers to it as apparatus, so we're going to try and stick with apparatus, but it's basically just the Golgi. The Golgi is are stacks of flattened membranes, um, and they modify, package, and transport proteins from the rough ER um, towards like heading out of the cell. So basically the rough ER is gonna make proteins, it's gonna put them in vesicles, send them to the Golgi. The Golgi is gonna go ahead and modify the packaging and then transport them to the cell membrane so they can be uh, brought out of the cell membrane through exocytosis and sent to other parts of the body. So that would be a very poorly drawn Golgi apparatus. And then we're gonna stick with the mitochondria. Now I know you all know mitochondria, but they are also membrane bound stacks. What's interesting about the mitochondria is that they have a double membrane. Um, and that double membrane is important when you talk about the production of ATP from glucose, but we're not gonna get really deep into that right now. But you do need to know that the mitochondria are the site of cellular respiration, so they are the responsible for the production of ATP. And that's my little mitochondria drawing, and I put the ATP coming out, because that's important. The next three, I think it's three on this slide, cytoplasmic organelles are the lysosomes. So lysosomes are one that you don't really talk about a lot, but most students actually remember lysosomes because the lysosomes are actually small sacks of digestive enzymes that actually break things down. So lys actually means break, so they're small stack, sacks of digestive enzymes, and they break down like worn out organelles, uh, macromolecules that need to be recycled, and like bacteria. So you can think of them as like the garbage men or the garbage disposal of the cell. So that's the lysosomes. Now, ones that you probably don't hear about are the peroxisomes. So the peroxisomes do something similar, except instead of breaking down uh, general organelles and macromolecules, they primarily break down hydrogen peroxide that is generated in your cell as a waste product, and hydrogen peroxide would kill your cells, so you have to have a way to get rid of it. So they're small sacs that contain an enzyme that actually can break down hydrogen peroxide. Um, it, they can also break down lipids and alcohols, and that's, that's important because it helps detoxify the cells some. And then uh, the centrosome. So the centrosome is not a word that you've probably heard a lot, but I bet you've heard centrioles. So the centriole, centrosome is actually just the two centrioles and they kind of like hang out together near the nucleus when it's not mitosis. So it's the two centrioles, they hang out near the nucleus. Uh, the centrioles actually make the spindle fibers that are used um, during mitosis for nuclear division. Uh, so that's my terrible drawing of centrioles. And I'd like to tell you that they're gonna get better, but they're not. They're never gonna get better. 
So other cellular structures, because we can't just, just talk about the organelles that are floating around in the cytoplasm, because then these notes would only be sort of long instead of unreasonably long. So other, <laughs> sorry, other cellular structures. We have to talk about the cytoskeleton. So I said that it provided structure and movement for the cell, but we need to talk about what are the parts of the cytoskeleton. So there's three parts. There's microfilaments, and microfilaments are really small, micro, and they're rods made of actin, and they provide the movement. So actin is a protein that uh, is involved in your muscles a lot, and it provides the contraction factor of your muscles, so they provide movement. Uh, then there's microtubules, and those are larger, and they're tubes of a protein called tubulin, which is at least helpful. I mean, you can at least remember that, right? Uh, and they provide rigidity to the cells to kind of help keep that shape. Um, and they are also in flagella and cilia and centrioles because those are all structures that need to have like kind of a rigid shape to go ahead and do their, their job. They can't be all mushy. Otherwise, I mean, you, they wouldn't actually work to provide any kind of motion. So think of the microtubules as sort of the, the, the bones of the cell. They're not really the bones of the cell, but if that helps you, it helps you. And then the intermediate filaments. Whoa, my handwriting got terrible there. The intermediate filaments are, in fact, intermediate in size. Um, and they're made of multiple different proteins, and they provide some just general structure. And I'm not going to talk to you about the intermediate filaments a lot because that's kind of beyond the scope. You do need to know microtubules and microfilaments. All right. Uh, so... Moving on to the other cellular structures, the ones that we didn't just cover. So we're gonna talk about cilia, and then we're gonna talk about flagella. So cilia are like hair-like extensions of the cell membrane, and they go like this. And they kind of like beat in a specific motion, and they sweep things away. So like in your respiratory package, the passages, they like move, move, move mucus away. Um, so in eukaryotic cells that are like multicellular organisms, eukaryotic cells in multicellular organisms, the cilia just kind of move things, move things along the passageways. They're not going to make your cells move around because they're on cells that are attached to like a tissue. Um, so they're made of microtubules. Uh, and they're in a cylinder. It's important that you know that the microtubules are in a cyl cylindrical pattern. Um, and they move back and forth, like I said. The next one, oh yeah, they're found on the surfaces of epithelial cells that line different passageways. I said that, but I didn't actually write it, sorry. Uh, so there's my little terrible drawing of cilia or a sun, depending on what grade you're in. Flagella, we all know flagella. Flagella is a tail-like extension of the cell membrane. Um, and it provides cell movement. So this actually makes the cell move, which means we have to be talking about cells that are not attached to a large tissue. So the example, it would be a sperm. That's the classic example. So the long tail of a sperm is a flagella. So that's it for your general overview of cells. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and in a separate video, we're gonna talk about the cell membrane because it's pretty specific. And I don't want to overload you any more than I already have. If you have any questions, come on in to tutoring.